Thank you very much for this opportunity to address you today. I just want to share with you two things. I'm the president of the Ukrainian World Congress. The Ukrainian World Congress is the international coordinating body that represents Ukrainians living outside of Ukraine. There are 20 million Ukrainians living outside of Ukraine, including about 7,000 Ukrainians living in the Netherlands. Uh, our network, uh, we have member organizations and community organizations that work with us in 49 countries and we've been in existence over 50 years. I do not have the same constraints as the ambassador, so I'm going to speak to you much more directly and I'll tell you this. The Ukrainian World Congress position and the position of the Ukrainian, Ukrainians living outside of Ukraine is that the best option for Ukraine is for Ukraine to Euro-integrate. We want to see Ukraine a fully democratic European country. And I assure you that when I say this, I say this from an independent organization. Our organization is not paid by the government of Ukraine or by any government for that matter. We uh, are uh, supported by our constituents uh, who are essentially Ukrainian, the Ukrainian diaspora. When I was traveling uh, and meeting uh, EU leaders during the Yanukovych years, I was told consistently that Ukraine has to show that it actually embraces European values. I don't think that there's any nation that has shown that it embraces European values like the Ukrainian people. And for that, they, were, they suffered, they were humiliated, they were tortured, they were beaten, and they were killed by snipers. And amazingly, they stood their ground, and they still want to be a European democratic country. I've heard two arguments that, from the no side, are uh, Continuing, one is that the seven, that the association agreement has already caused the death of about seven thousand individuals, and has caused that over twenty thousand have been wounded, and over a million five hundred thousand have been internally displaced. I want to dispel that myth and tell you that it's not the association agreement that has caused this. This has been caused by the fact that Russia does not accept the obvious fact that Ukraine decides its own future. And the international community should not be misled by thinking that it's the association agreement or it's the Euro integration that causes that suffering in Ukraine. That suffering is caused by an authoritarian imperialist regime that does not recognize Ukraine's independence and its right to self-determination. The other issue is corruption in Ukraine. I assure you that everybody would like the situation to be better. Everybody would like reforms to be moving faster. I know that when I was at the inauguration of President the, the Poroshenko, I met uh, an NGO group that gave me 15 changes that have to be implemented and told me if these are not implemented in 60 days, there will be a third Maidan. And I told them, even in countries such as Canada and the United States, that would not be possible within a period of one year. So all I want to tell you on the issue of corruption is that there are changes. There are various changes, and uh, hopefully today during the debate, you will hear what are the changes that have been made. <coughs> Legislation has been changed, uh, an anti-corruption bureau has been created, a new police force has been created. There are various issues, but they are being totally subdued by a Russian disinformation campaign that wants to convince you that Ukraine is a failed state. And on that count, I want to sh tell you that even God needed seven days to create the world. Give Ukraine a chance. Take a look 
at the important changes that have been implemented to fight corruption, the important changes that have been adopted in order to make it uh, more in conformity with EU legislation, and I will assure you that you will have, you will be pleasantly surprised. And finally, I wish to tell you that I'm a father of three, I'm a grandfather with one and one in coming, and I don't like the fact that my children and my grandchildren are being raised in a world that's dangerous. A world where there is indiscriminate uh, violence, as the recent events in Brussels have demonstrated. And I say to you this, when a country the size of France, with a 45 million population, wants to live by European values, wants to change and be a fully European country. This at once democracy, wants security and stability. Well, that kind of Ukraine will ensure for the EU, for Europe, and for Western democracies that a larger portion of Europe is stable, is secure, and is democratic. And all I ask is the day that you go to vote, that beyond all the ads, all the arguments, the yes and the no campaign, think whether it is in our best interest to turn such a vast piece of land with such a vast population to be just like us or not. And I think that if you think in those categories, you will make the right decisions. And I encourage you to do that. Thank you very much. And I wish you a very successful uh, and good debate today.